Hello everyone and welcome to the Information Cycle COVID-19 example video. In this video, I want to take the opportunity to look at what's going on in our current world to help you better understand the information cycle and primary and secondary sources. Sometimes these ideas may seem a little weird until you start to look at an everyday example. The infographic currently on the screen shows you the information cycle in action and the different stages in which information transforms. Information is not created in a vacuum. There is usually some starting event and then it travels through time into various sources. Which sources have which type of information, how quickly the information changes, and the overall quality are therefore affected based on this cycle. Usually when something new happens, we start to see it through the web, social media, and news like radio and television. Then, as more information is gathered the next day, you start to see it in newspapers. When even more information comes out in the following week or weeks, you start to see magazines. And each of these, while all popular sources and all for a general audience, have different amounts of quality control and editing and responses. One month to three years, you'll start to see popular books and other popular sources. Government documents will also usually start to appear about this time. Three months to three years is about where we are now with COVID-19. This is when you start to get secondary scholarly journal articles. Still no books yet because we haven't quite gotten enough information. Two years or so in, you'll start to get really advanced books by researchers and other scholars. And then five plus years in, you'll start to get general reference books like encyclopedias, handbooks, and manuals. That's why if you have a reference book, it's a good place to get an overview of an event. It's after a lot of time and research has passed, so there are some general understandings that are happening at that point that you couldn't know at the beginning. What does this have to do with primary and secondary? Primary and secondary refers to sources based on this thread of time. Primary sources are happening near or at the time of the event, and they report information. They don't analyze it or interpret it. So most of the time, your first sources are going to be primary. But keep in mind that just like popular and scholarly, you cannot determine primary or secondary by source type alone. Let's look at two newspaper articles just to give an example. The first newspaper article is from the New York Times. In this article, which was published on August 20th, they talk about a study that they did, or rather a census, where the New York Times looked at over 7,000 people at 14 spots across New York City to find out how well New Yorkers were actually wearing masks. This one is a primary source, but it's not primary just because it's from a newspaper. It's primary because it is happening at the time of the event. This is what's happening right now in August of 2020. And it is reporting their information that they gathered. It's not analyzing the information. It's not interpreting the information. So if I read this article, I can find out how they did this census, what their results were, and later on they actually go area by area to say what percentage of people were wearing masks. It's actually kind of a cool read. This second article from the Irish Times is also from a newspaper, but this one is not a primary source. It says that studies show positive signs of strong lasting COVID-19 immunity. It is summarizing some of the results that new studies have done. It is not giving just a report. It is actually reviewing. So it's building on top of these studies. It provides a link to the studies in question, like this one but it is not the study. So this one would be the primary source in this case, even though it's a scholarly journal article. And this one would be the secondary source summarizing that work. For secondary sources, which tend to happen a little bit later, 
these are taking place some significant amount of time after the event and they are analyzing or interpreting information from other sources. They're not just reporting anymore. They're actually doing something more with the information. And again, regardless of the source type, you need to check if it's primary or secondary. Let's look at another example, but instead of newspaper articles this time, we're gonna use scholarly journals. The first one is a systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized trials. That's a lot of technical jargon, but what that means is this article is not a primary source. It is a secondary source. Why is it secondary? Not just because it's a scholarly article, but because of the type of article it is. In this article, as described in the background, in the abstract, they looked at all published studies about comparing medical masks to N95 respirators. They looked in these databases over this period of time and they selected these studies. They then analyzed the results to make a final conclusion. So this one's definitely secondary because it's not just reporting information, it's actually analyzing it and making some conclusion. This scholarly journal article, First COVID-19 Infections in the Philippines, a case report, is actually a primary source, even though it's from a scholarly journal. In a case report, they are reporting what they are observing at the time. So this article looks at the first suspected case of the Philippines that was investigated and then reported. And it talks about what they did with that patient one. This is reporting information. It's giving information that they have at that time and it's original research. It does not analyze or interpret from other sources. If you look at the time in which these were published, it's also a little bit older than our first source. This was published back in April of 2020, whereas the secondary meta-analysis was published in July. So there is some time difference between them as well. So what is the takeaway of all this? The takeaway is, because of the information cycle, the types, quality, and amount of information on a particular topic may differ depending on how old or how new that topic is. If you're trying to study a current event, you're probably going to find most of your information in the beginning parts of the cycle, which will be popular and more primary sources. Then, as time goes on, that's when you'll start to get more scholarly and secondary sources. So depending on what your topic is, you may need to decide on an avenue of research that allows you to use whatever type of source it is that you need to find and keep in mind what kind of sources are available. I hope you find this video helpful. If I can answer any questions, please don't hesitate to email me.